when swirling goes wrong. Make sure you guys hit the like button, share the episode on your social media. Uh, that helps a whole lot. Share the social, uh, share the episode. Um, you can even share the uh, panel link if you want to. The, again, the more the merrier. So I appreciate it. And again, if you're in the chat watching the show, you know, post your thoughts on these topics as well. We get to feed off of those comments. Um, Sister Raw says them going to come and say we've been free now for so long and then find that we're still, we still live like, you know, the animals, the worst of the worst beings on the planet. So, so back to slavery we go. Yeah, if we're not careful, we will be back in slavery if we're not careful. Uh, if, if we don't wise up. At least that, that's my personal opinion. So should be stopping number five tonight is when swirling goes wrong. We're making a really good time tonight. This prompt came with a link. And I think it's an article. Yes. Married interracial YouTube couple, Gin and Juice, alleged domestic abuse in public fight Amid divorce, so this is gin, I guess, and juice over here. The marriage of YouTube duo Gin and Juice, who rose to fame by sharing videos of their real life marriage as an interracial couple, has come to a very public and explosive end with each side alleging physical abuse. Juice, whose real name is Soros, initially posted a video on April 26 detailing that the couple had not posted much in recent weeks because Jin, also known as Gohan, was going through a quote-unquote rough time and had returned to Korea to take a break and spend more time with his friends and family. Quote, it's one thing to be an interracial couple. It's a whole another thing to be an international couple, uh, Soros explained, sharing that there was no definitive time for when he would return to their nearly 1 million subscribers. She said cheerfully that it would be just her on the channel for a while and asked fans to comment with encouraging words because Gohan's love language is words of affirmation. The couple shared two children named uh, Savone and Sefer and had started the channel roughly two years ago after meeting in South Korea. Gohan has not only, has not only his family members' names tattooed on his neck, but also a large forearm tattoo of Soroza's face. The couple experienced success after their My Girlfriend Freestyle Raps in Korean video from a year ago went viral, garnering over 10 million views. Some of their most popular uploads have included pranks, music videos, reactions, and vlogs regarding their Korean and Black American backgrounds. On June 3rd, however, Gohan posted a shocking tell-all video titled exposing gin and juice on a separate independent YouTube channel under his, under his rapper name, Young Gohan. So uh, I guess I'll play this video and then we'll discuss it. Damn, it's probably been a long time since you guys uh, saw me. There's been a lot going on for the past two months, probably including the TikTok video of me kissing another girl in the club my sudden disappearance so today in this video i wanted to address everything i don't know if i'm gonna keep this short or if i'm gonna just like spill everything the reason i've been avoiding this whole situation somebody told me it would be very devastating for the babies the more i think about it the truth needs to be revealed to continue on living like a healthy life you probably know me from gin and juice we started youtube about two years ago somebody said that i left america because i missed my family and made a whole video about it, but that is not true. I would say I escaped because I was going through domestic violence. Shout out to Johnny Depp for giving me the courage to make this video right now. So I don't know if you can see, I got a second degree burn mark from burning me with the hair straightener at 450 degrees Fahrenheit. I've had knives on my throat with somebody threatening to kill me. That somebody prevented me from having any power or control, including finances. Last year, we made a company called Gin and Juice LLC. She's the sole CEO and employee in that company. She did not want to put my name in there, I'm assuming because she thought I would run away or get myself a like a house in America. All the money we make from Gin and Juice, including any sponsorships, oh, 
straight into Gin and Juice LLC, which is her bank account. You know, I think I need to start from the beginning. I'll just tell you my whole fucking story. We met in Korea, but we met on Tinder. There's a whole video explaining how we met on the subway. That's a straight up lie. We did not just meet on the subway. We met in the subway station because we decided to meet through Tinder. She was kind of embarrassed about the fact that we met through an online dating, dating app. We dated for three months in Korea. We went to America. She was pregnant. We had a baby. So I decided I would just get my green card over there. The thing is, I still don't have my green card. It took like a whole year for me to even get into like the interview, like almost a year. I did get approved for a two year conditional green card, but we haven't went to the interview so I can extend that to a 10 year. My green card is going to expire very soon. So I'm probably not going to be able to legally step in America anyways. The main reason I decided to escape to Korea and not anywhere else in America, it was literally impossible for me to even think of staying there without a legally with the without proper documents. I can't get it without her help. I was I was basically done getting abused. I did not have a life. I slept three to four hours on average every single day. And mind you, I'm somebody who usually sleeps like 12 to 14 fucking hours on average to basically just trap me in the room and gaslight me into editing videos back to back to back to back. I do not think she is willing to send the kids over to Korea for me to be able to take care of them. I've asked her to like send them over three months at a time, six months, if that's possible or more, I'll, I'll take care of them. She denied. So I'm pro and I do want to see my kids. So I am going to have to internationally get a divorce and get like the judge to, you know, I've changed almost a hundred percent of the poop diapers because she didn't want to. I mean, I mean, she says her smell is really sensitive, so she can't stand the smell of baby poop, but I don't, I don't like baby poop smells either. And 95% of the pee, I've had to do like pretty much literally everything from filming to editing, feeding the babies. She was usually just on the bed, just watching TikTok all day. For the first like six months, I could not work. Um, it took a very long time for USCIS to give me a, a work visa even. And I wanted to work under the table, like construction work or something, but she didn't want to risk me getting deported. She said she would work three jobs, which she did. She barely slept and she worked very hard. In that phase, I was very stressed about the fact that I'm not bringing in any income for the family. I felt like luggage, drink almost every day. One day I drank a whole bottle of wine. I, I was sleeping on the floor. This is what she says. She wanted to wake me up and take me upstairs. I started punching her shin. When I woke up, she told me that. She told me I started it. I, I don't remember. I'm not denying the fact that it might have happened. It could have very much happened and it's not right. And I am sorry for that, but that was her excuse for starting to hit me, slap me around when things got heated or simply if I didn't agree with what she thought. My girlfriend freestyle raps in Korean. That video blew up, our channel blew up. The money started coming in like crazy for a while. Before all that, the content for our YouTube channel. We were happy filming. I was happy editing, and like interacting with our whole community. I felt like we kept it really, I, I don't know, I'd say genuine. And then after that, most things I'm sure you guys can tell are scripted. Not necessarily a bad thing, but I would say that's not the lifestyle that I wanted. She thought it was necessary for us to do that because it guaranteed us a certain amount of income. I don't think so, because even if we didn't do all that shit, people subscribed to our channel and loved us because of who we were. It was very hard to have an opinion. I'm a very strong opinion person but she did not allow herself to lose even if she was wrong I feel like if I didn't okay I gave him five minutes that, that's like an 18 minute video alone uh, this is the my girlfriend freestyle raps I'll play a couple minutes of this Okay, obviously she's a whole goofy to begin with. Uh, let's see what she had to say in this video here. 안녕. 
What's up guys, it's your girl Sarose and uh, it's been a while. It's been um, probably like what, shoot, it's been like two, about to be three weeks since we posted on the Gin and Juice channel. And um, you know, I like to be very transparent with you guys and I'm gonna try to get through this entire video without crying. I'm also gonna try to get through this entire video without cutting, cutting, cutting anything or anything like that just because um, this is like a very emotional time for uh, the both of us. But um, like, as you guys know, like since we first started our YouTube journey in like 2019, like without fail, we had kind of like been posting like consistently. We went from doing things weekly to, you know, being like bi-weekly, like all that stuff. We, you know, have just the amount of success that we've had through YouTube in the past couple of years has been exponential and it's blessed us in so many ways. Like it's blessed us with, you know, the Jinju fam and just like this amazing, amazing group of people from all around the world that we were able to share our life experiences with and able to share our children with. And it's just really the whole thing has been a huge blessing. Um, and as you know, we haven't posted for like two going on three weeks now. And I just, y'all know, like I like to be transparent and I'm going to try to be as transparent as possible without like diving too much in the situation just because um I can't really speak for Gohan but um just like you guys have seen like the past couple of videos and kind of that he's been down and he's kind of been in a rut and I will just say that he has been really conflicted with his emotions in terms of us being an international couple because being interracial is like one thing but when you have your family and your life and everything that you know like on a completely other side of the world like things really do get rough and it got to a point for him where it was like you know this was getting really rough um and he made the decision that you know um it was the right time to go back to korea and just spend some time with his family. So he's been gone for like two weeks now. I was just in Korea a couple days ago to see him as well. Like this is very difficult, very emotional. Like since we've been together, like the max amount of time that we spent away from each other has been probably like, like four days. <laughs> four days is the longest we've ever been away from each other. So now going on like three weeks, this is like, very difficult. I actually haven't even, this is like the first time that I'm back in the apartment um, since everything has kind of like went down, like since he, you know, made the decision to go and spend some time with his like friends and family. Um, just because it's like, this was our place, you know, like, and we were getting ready to do like a whole bunch of good things, productive things, progressive things or whatever with like our future. But, you know, kind of just the overwhelming emotions and missing his friends and family and life back in Korea and all that stuff was starting to uh, get to him a little. There was also kind of, I guess I could say stuff that had to do with like YouTube. Um, as you go, you get, ah, sorry, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> I can't mess up because I'm not going to cut it. But uh, as you guys know, um, or maybe some of you don't know, Gohan has actually um, been Gin and Juice's like editor for a long time and he does a freaking amazing amazing all right i'm done with that um in the chat i ain't got no time to watch some bad wench talk about some japanese guy in the chat um the chief mindset was saying how are you going to call yourself juice his family said cancel it talking about the youtube channel um he goes on to say, notice she went to Korea to find him. He properly left to Korea to run from child support and alimony. Uh, Chief Mindset also said, LOL, she went to Korea to find a simp. Let me introduce a Chief Mindset to the panel. Chief, how are you, brother? Uh, hello, how you doing? I'm good. Greetings. It's been um, a while. Yeah, it's been a while. I've been listening in, but I haven't been able to tune in the miss. Yes, sir. Do some some computing and learning and stuff, but oh man, I I, I was listening. And I I didn't want to join in earlier. I mean, I, the conversation was flowing, and the other topics, the panel, you know, did great. But this one is just funny because you guys are older, but 
this this couple here and these other couples on YouTube, right? There's been a lot of pressure on young black males, young black men to follow them, you know. Oh, when they oh, take really? them, yeah, they, when they take them to 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 Japan or or Costa Rica for holiday, them and their and make sure his children. How come you know these black men can't do that? You know, especially in um, Lipstick Alley and all those places. You mm. know, black men get ridiculed for not doing the same thing. And the funny thing is that right, she went to Korea to find him. You understand? He doesn't. He didn't come and find her. And with interracial relationship, it's always the black person seeking out the other race. Like, mm -hmm. what's funny in all of this is that, right? He did it to, for, to get a green card. She knew what he wanted and never gave it to him. Got the two children out of him, and she's gonna try to do some Kim K S thing to try to try to do, you know, a mother and the two children's life. And she's gonna find out on YouTube that. She's just like all oh, those other, you know, not disrespecting those black women with the children doing the YouTube thing. Nobody cares because why? They didn't. They didn't come to see your face. They didn't come to see, to see you sell. Talk about you and your children. They came because you are in an interracial relationship and it's entertaining for them. You understand? And and the funny thing is that he's he just packed up. What 2019? He just packed up in like what three years? And gone. His family was like, look, cut it off. It's disrespectful to us. And I don't know if you watch Netflix or anything, but they seem to have some weird obsession with, not weird obsession, actually, it's a good obsession with authority and a ranking and, and how to greet people, you know, saying formally, informally. And he probably went back home and like, yo, what goofy stuff are you doing? Cut it off. You're, dis <laughs> you're disrespecting our people. She seriously, bro. You think about it. Like she ain't gonna, she she's not gonna get no alimony. Her YouTube space is gonna be a child support and alimony, and she's not gonna do any. She's nobody. Nobody's gonna want to want to know more about her. And that's the funny thing because every I don't because you guys are oh you don't see it right, but there's been threads, there's been talks on Twitter, Twitter not not Twitter space but Twitter about these couples, these other couples are doing it, and you know. How great they are! Are they an example to black men? And all this nonsense. And man, I, I, I am just—I don't know what the phrase is, but I'm rejoicing, man. I ain't gonna lie, I'm rejoicing. You know, what I'm saying I want some of their tears to drink. So I am rejoicing because these people do do. They don't target. The funny thing is this. Oh, I'm sorry. They don't target other races with their content. They target black women. Mm -hmm. That's the problem. They keep and YouTube YouTube facilitates this. You watch a black couple talk about their life, you enjoy it, and all the recommend recommendation is them. You know what I'm saying? It's facilitating it to keep bringing us down. So when I see this kind of stuff, I personally rejoice because it shows once again that these kind of stuff are fake. They're not genuine, and it's never going to be as great as black love. And that's all I have to say, man. So I'm happy for this. I'm very happy. I appreciate that, Chief, because you, you kind of highlighted something I was trying to figure out. Like, how did, who is this? This is the Yahoo News. How did they know about these people and whatnot? But you see, that's how these algorithms work, man. They promote this type of shit, too. Uh, Brother Bakari, I think you have to have to leave us. So before you go, let us know what you think about this prompt when swirling goes wrong. First of all, were you familiar with this couple? No, I was not familiar with them. Okay. I'm familiar with Koreans because I was in the military and lived there for a whole year, mm -hmm. and I know they don't like black people at all. Mm -hmm. uh, Talk about it. Uh, they they really don't, and they were, you know, of course they come back, they'll copy your style, they sell your stuff back to you. Mm -hmm. They even tell you how they have copied, how they <laughs> study black people, know what black people like, and that's how they're able to sell it to them. Mm -hmm. You know, but they really, for the most part, they really don't care they really don't care for black people that much, right? Now, one thing, and I even put this in the chat, but when the group was talking, when that dude, when that boy was talking, that Korean boy, when he was talking, he said he only been sleeping three, four hours a day. But normally he sleeps 11 to 12 hours a day. Now, if that was a black man who said he slept 11 to 12 hours a day, right? 
she and any other black man with all these damn divestors uh, uh, would be calling him a bum or a dusty. But you can go get you some Google who folks don't care about you at all. And it's okay for him to not do nothing and lay around and sleep 11, 12 hours a day. You understand what I'm saying? So whatever happened to her, that's good for her. It have nothing to do with me. That's her problem. And should no black men forecast, go try to run to her, <laughs> <laughs> try to take up for her, to hell with her. Right. Like K.W. Don put in a chat, quoting Dr. John Henry Clark, when you go over there, stay over there. Don't mm-hmm. come back thinking, uh, 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 you welcome. No, uh-uh. Your black heart is far as I'm concerned, and not right. no black card, because you can't get a card to be black. That means anybody can just come get a black card. Right. No, you being black don't mean a damn thing no more. You just old sorry-ass bed wench who married a sorry-ass gook who wanted a green card. You didn't give it to him. Uh, you wanted whatever was going on. Now he's running back to Korea to eat that stinking-ass kimchi and chicken noodle soup <laughs> and uh, 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 uh to run away from child support in alimony. Mm-hmm. And I yield the mic. Before Cash, you know I had to say something. <laughs> uh, um, br- Brother Bakari, just let the people know how they can find you and when you'll be on next, et cetera, if you know. Okay, my uh, uh, my channel is Brother Bakari. Actually, I'm doing a show tomorrow. It's about, uh, and, I, and, I, and I'm probably going to come back over here. I just got to step away for a little while. Oh. Uh, but uh, I'm doing a show tomorrow. It's on an identity crisis uh, by Brother Seneb. It's a quick little 15 minute is showing how this identity crisis that black people is going through is not new. And then I'm going to use Dr. Amos Wilson on how we can use our racial identity for opportunity to come up in a crisis. Okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mix them together. Okay. Brother Bakari, are you on Twitter? Because I have someone who follow me, follows me on Twitter named Bakari. But I'm not sure no. if that's you or not. No, that's not me. I, I'm not on Twitter. Oh, okay. All right. All right. So, All right. B- B- Bakari, I think, will be back later, uh, if possible. But you guys know what you got to do. Go subscribe to his channel and uh, click the bell to be notified when he has new content coming up. Um, I just want to shout out Athraser in the chat. Early, he said, once free, you have to choose or create a direction. This is where we are stuck. We argue at this frontier. So, I want to Shout out Athraser for coming through. He said, Lord of mercy, if my grandmother Mabel could see me now, I can see her face. Uh, appreciate you for coming through. Uh, let's go to um, the forecast. I like to hear the forecast take on stuff. The forecast, what say you to this whole thing? All right. um, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I'll give Bakari a pass because, you know, he <laughs> wanted to say something and run, but. Nah, I'm just joking. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yo, it's crazy. Yesterday, I literally did a show yesterday called um, Black and Yellow, Hurry Up and Buy. You know what I'm saying? But um, it wasn't that. necessarily about this. Um, but, you know, like, um, when it comes to interracial day, I mean, I don't know what else we could say. Like, I'm still mad about Emmett Till. You know what I'm saying? Like, and at the end of the day, for me, I know I would want my kids to look like me. You know what I'm saying? Um Yo, the most I could say about this, because a lot of people tell me, like, and let me ask y'all, can that, can that, um, whatever he is, that Chinese dude, um, have a black kid? Uh, no. Um. No. No. But aren't like mixed, like race kids black? No. No, no, that's no. not. No. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I agree with y'all. Most people say they are, though. That's all. That's yeah, all. most black folks would say, yeah, you know, because most black folks follow the one drop rule. Right. But 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 yeah. for us here who are enlightened and initiated, we know that you know th- th- those kids are not our people. You know. But go ahead, our uh, forecast. No, yeah, that that was pretty much all I was um going to say. You know what I'm okay. saying? But um. Yeah, like, yo, people say that love is love and all of that, but uh, you can't control who you actually talk to and stuff like that. So, Of course. Love yeah. is a priority. Right. Love is priority. So when you hear people talk about love is love, that's bullshit. You chose that. Right. If, and you, ha- if, if you prioritize your people, you would love your people. 
if you love yourself, you would prioritize yourself. You know what I'm saying? Because exactly. like, and then you put your kids in a crazy position. Because like, mm -hmm. if something ever go down, that now they got to choose between mom and dad. You know what I'm saying? And you know who they go choose? They go choose the side that's winning currently. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, there was something Bakari said I wanted to double down on too, and I just oh yeah, uh, Bakari pointed out this 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 Asian can sleep half the goddamn day. That's another thing you find with these interracial relationships, which, which is why I'm not keen on them at all. Oftentimes, almost all the time, black folks take a subservient role in those relationships. So, so the shit that they would take from this other, they would never take from a black guy or a black woman. You understand? Like Bakari said, this same black woman, if you were a black guy with her and you were laying up in your bed for 11 12 hours a day she would call you all sorts of bum and this that and the other and she'll be cheating on you and all kind of shit, right but this asian dude gets a pass you know we got to get off of this stuff man we gotta stop this afrophobia and this self-hatred that we have and this 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 keen this uh this this willingness to always be subservient in these kind of relationships, man, if you got to be subservient in those relationships, just don't get in them. Oh, peace to Tanzan. Tanzan is here saying greetings, peace and greetings to me and I guess the panel as well, Brother Bakari, Forecast, etc. Uh, Bakari in the chat says, Hell no to the no no, no black kids in that family, you know. Um, Achieve Mindset said she was his pimp. Right. Uh, let me go to uh, Caesar. I haven't heard from Caesar in a bit. And by the way, Caesar, thanks for coming through and spending time with us on a Saturday night. Caesar, you saw this whole thing. What's your take on it? So I've actually seen this couple before on YouTube because, you know, they push this kind of right. stuff on this platform. I don't watch it because, you know, I understand I can't help support this. But if you check her channel out right now, you read the comments. One of the comments is about how she worked three jobs. Well, he just stayed at home all day wow. doing housework. You know, how many times, how, can you get that deal? Come on. Can I get that deal for one no. of these sisters? She works three jobs and I'm at the house all day. So what I've seen with all these relationships is that it's usually, a lot of times mental illness, they put up, like you just said, they put up with stuff they never put up with. You know, black men do it. Black women do it. I, I don't really feel bad for her because people need to know this is what happens. Um, I mean, that's really it. Tough luck. You know, I hope. I hope other girls see this and realize that when you go over there, and guess what? If you look at the Korean comments, if you translate it, they're not supporting her. Mm. So she went over to another team. Koreans are racist. They don't really like her, and she's dark-skinned too. Mm -hmm. So now she's going to realize the family don't accept her. So, I mean, this is what happens when you go on that team. That's it. I appreciate that, Caesar. Um, Mr. Untouchable, we haven't heard from you in a while. Let us know what you gotta say. Y'all, y'all have to forgive me for a little bit because I don't think that she take a loss in the situation. <laughs> she she went over to Korea. She got a Korean slave. Uh, uh, she uh, she used to have him in the room and editing for twenty four hours a day, just edit her shit. She got all all her, she got an LLC in her name. She get all, she getting all the money from the chattel. I mean, she get, I don't know if she wanted kids, but she get two babies out of him. She used to beat him. That really sounded like she was his pimp. She was pimping him. <laughs> yeah, that's what, um, I, that, I that's don't what know. she maybe, said. Maybe it's just me. Maybe it's just me. But uh, yeah. I do agree. I do agree with the brothers. You know what I mean? And I, I just this sentiment. I don't I don't particularly care for the, the fact that um, she don't understand. What she don't understand is that these people fetishize us. You know what I mean? They have a particular stereotype about us and they fetish, fetish, fetishize us in a way and it's not necessarily love. They don't see us as human beings. They see a particular image and they try to live that out as, as a reality. You know, So it's not based on humanity or love or anything like that. But I believe, and, and I also believe that he didn't want a, a U.S. A US um, uh, so passport or whatever, mm -hmm. you know, and he was trying to go the long way around, but she was hip to game and she game him. You know, that's how I see, I'm seeing the situation. Maybe it's just me, 
But um, <laughs> I, 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 I agree with your brothers. I, I don't necessarily chew on it to go over there. Well, stay over there, you know, and take what, what comes with that. You know, that's where I am with it. But I don't believe she took a loss with it. I really don't. <laughs> well, I, I'll say this, Mr. Untouchable. She's going to have, she has these two kids who I could bet money are going to be traitorous to her her race. You think so, Goku? Yeah. The, the children go with the winning side all the time. Okay, okay. Let me say this. I'll say yeah. this. I'll say this. Bob Molly daddy was a white man. Yeah. Okay, so he was reject he was rejected from his dad. That's what you know, he's saying on the stone that the bill yeah. That was mm -hmm. based off of him trying to uh, reconcile with his dad. His dad's like, I ain't having none of it. You know what I mean? He was, he was a nigga. But needless to say, not always, not always. But I, I am. I take an optimistic approach to it. You know, I, I wouldn't want him, her, her children to have a terrible view of, of, of black folks. You know, I'm hopeful about it. But I, I like I said, I, I agree with the panelists. You know, I, I tend to, I like black women. You know, I like black women. What, I mean, why would I want an Asian woman? You know, it's, it's, yeah. It just don't make no sense to me. But to each his own, man. To each his own. Like Achieve Mindset said, the song lyrics, don't save her. She don't want to be saved. Don't save her. Um, Kevin Carre, what say you to all of this? Yeah, um, is it me or it, did, didn't, didn't the guy seem very feminine the way he was talking? Like, he, he seemed like he was suffering from, from um, uh, beaten wife syndrome. It's like, yeah, she was doing this to me, and I gotta do this. It's like, you know, after a marriage, and you got a scorned wife that, that's angry, and she go, she's going to the media talking, talking all the dirty, all the show, just showing all your dirty laundry. That's what he sound like. But I've been studying this for not long for years since I was in high school because I went to a high school where it was right near, her, you know, Chinatown, right there. So I'm, I'm always, my classmates were all Asians, and all of them would tell me this. Like, yeah, outside of the, you know, outside of the town, you know, I can, I can talk to you. I can, you know, we can do whatever, but I can't bring you home. And if, if, and if I marry you and I have kids, my family's going to disown me. That's all those Asian people. And I wish a lot of these black folks would, would see it. But, you know, what, what, what can you say? Yeah. Um, I, uh, I used to have a work-study student work with me. And she is the one, a black girl just like this, dark skin black girl just like this, young, young woman. And she put me on to this group called BTS. I had never heard of them, but apparently they were all the rage at the time. Um, and it was a bunch of these feminine looking and acting uh, Asian dudes. I, they might be Korean. I'm not even sure. But um, you, you you tend to see that and a lot of black women, a, a lot of younger black women, I find, are in this group of, 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 of folks who like these are feminine effeminate Asians and that, that's something that's pretty troubling too maybe maybe we should dissect that more in the future but there's a there's a little movement here to get you one of these little soft Asian guys and I'm not sure why that is um if anyone else wants to add a last word by all means oh, do so I now say that um the BTS group that you're talking about is very popular in, in Korea singing R&B songs, covers of Chris Brown and Jason Derulo, Omario and all these guys, right? Mm -hmm. That's how they gained their popularity. What's funny is that they learned to dance by copying, as you know, Jace, um, Jason Derulo, right? Yeah. And they, they then did a whole reverse thing where they accused Jason Derulo of stealing their songs. Oh, really? Yeah. You know, when Jason Derulo hit, got that one hit single that she he came back of mm -hmm. they were saying he was trying to pick off their their popularity and what's funny is that like i think i just typed in now but people can correct me they were doing a lot of song covers of, of bt of um chris brown and chris brown up on now i don't think he's worked with them i don't think i have a track i can see on google that he's actually worked with them and you kind of see that jason derulo at that time was desperate for anything because he wanted to seek attention right and these people take, you know, again, take the music and keep remixing it mm -hmm. and sell it back to us. Now they're doing the Boyd Band thing. And that Boyd Band thing was in the 90s. 
you know, mm-hmm. and and it goes it goes to show that when we talk about the feminine the feminine men is that you know I've I've watched some of the Korean um, film even they got the Korean money heist thing which is quite entertaining one all but the thing is that you look at all of this right and especially with especially dark skin you know dark skin black woman they don't the way some of them are brought up it is not that people keep saying that they don't believe in their own um, skin or they don't believe in confident who they are there are certain people who choose to go down certain paths because they believe that it will be more successful to be outside of the race and it's better that way you could look at this woman's face right and every single thing that tells me is that she's going to have this career on youtube and she's going to try to continue and it's not going to go well why because she's a she's a piece of entertainment and the entertainment that people wanted was the korean entertainment and now they don't have it they will simply just move on to somewhere else mm-hmm. and that's all that's all you know i have to say and you know good luck to her man you know good luck to her and i hope i hope no 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 black man no black you've gone next to no next next to her please stay away from her man how just save yourself you know just save yourself and hopefully she 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 sits in a corner and we keep it that way we keep it moving yeah that's a fact that you said there um we talked about this a couple of weeks ago about second chances and whatnot and i i stand firm that not everyone gets a second chance like someone said earlier in the chatting was kw on seven once you go over there, man, you stay over there. It's fine. I'm not upset with you or nothing. You go over there, though, you stay your ass over there. Don't come back on this side again. Um, if anyone doesn't have a last thought here, I'm going to post you to bring you topic number six, but we'll do a station ID before we discuss it. So if there's any last thoughts, let me know now. Uh, in the meantime... Shoot the breeze topic number six is going to be what is chivalry? Where does it come from? Should we stick a fork in it? So that's the upcoming topic. You guys hang out for a minute. Thank you guys for being here tonight. Um, what we're going to do is do a station ID break just to remind you guys that this show, the Bitter Medicine Podcast, is a part of a podcast network and there's other shows you should be tuned into as well.